Ulrike Arnold in her studio in Dusseldorf. She's been painting with materials from natural sources since 1980. Earth, sand, minerals, rocks. This here is uh, Erde from Karku. This is Earth from Karku, north of Alice Springs in central Australia. It's a very intense red, more intense than any I had previously seen. I dug it out of a cave with the Aborigines, who gave me the permission to work there. Ulrike Arnold has travelled extensively, collecting samples and creating artworks on all five continents. Two or three times a year, she takes a backpack and goes off on an expedition for a few weeks. Her destinations are usually remote, almost uninhabited areas where the painter finds an immense variety of colours. For example, in the desert of central Australia, the Colorado Plateau in Arizona, South Utah and in New Mexico, or in the volcanic landscape of Iceland. Since 1999, Ulrika Arnold has set up a second home in Flagstaff, Arizona. From there, she begins her expeditions into the southwest of the USA. Equipped with a tent, food and water, tools and canvas, she stays in her favourite areas for weeks on end or even months in order to explore and experience the spirit and nature of the region, always looking for suitable places to dig up earth or to chip stones of rock faces. Often the material gathered must be crushed with a hammer or ground to a fine sand or powder in a mortar. It's a time-consuming labour. then labelled and bagged up in small sacks for later use. The size of these grains of sand, small stones and mineral splinters depends on the degree of hardness of the material. Armed with this topographical palette of colours and pigments, Ulrika Arnold's actual artistic work begins. With her hands, a brush or a spatula, she spreads the earth onto the canvas which is on the ground, often in several layers. For mixing, she uses water. For fixing, a neutral transparent binder. The titles of her earth paintings have the names of the places where they were created. Ulrika Arnold doesn't show any landscapes as portraits, but rather her works reflect directly impressions and the experiences of the artist. First, you must find your way around a place. Stay a long time and stroll through the countryside. What is also really important is to experience day and night, natural phenomena, and what the weather is like. I try to capture the light there and also let the rain, the monsoon rain you often have in July and August, flow over the painting. A consequence of this is that coincidental formations occur, resulting in the creation of crusts, which means that nature is brought into the picture. It is important, therefore, to be at the location for a long time in order to be able to unite with it. On one hand, it's the typical material of the region itself, the original colours of the ground and rocks which give Ulrika Arnold's paintings their characteristic aura. On the other hand, her compositions, forms and gestures express her subjective experience with the place, being totally alone in the untouched wilderness for days or even weeks in an environment which is not always without danger. Since 1991, Ulrika Arnold has also been painting directly onto rock surfaces. With colours collected from the surrounding localities, 15 rock paintings have so far been created, for example in the southwest of the USA, in Arizona, Utah, Colorado and in New Mexico. To truly uncover remote regions of the world also means one must be open to other cultures. 
In 2001, I was invited to the German festival in India, Art in Nature, by the Goethe Institute. Four artists were invited to create Art in Nature. I searched for the right sites, and in Badami, Karnataka, in the southwest of India, I found the perfect place to paint on the rocks. In Badami, you find the prehistoric Siddalpadi cave with ancient rock paintings. Within the framework of the festival, Ulrika Arnold obtained permission to paint on the rocks opposite the holy place. During her participation in the Art in Nature festival, she was accompanied for two months by the Indian filmmaker Avi Ramani. Another highlight of her rock art had already been created in 1996 in the Mariposa project on Tenerife, Tagoror, a circular rock formation with a diameter of 12 meters. During her work on the Tagoror, she got to know the explorer and venturer Tor Heyerdahl, a hero of her youth who visited her during her stay. In 2002, she got to know another hero. In that year, the Flagstaff Institute for Astrogeology celebrated the 30th anniversary of the last manned Apollo mission to the moon. And on that occasion, Ulrika Arnold met the astronaut Harrison Schmidt, who was on board in 1972. Es kam ja urplötzlich die Idee, Suddenly I had the idea, after having painted on the five continents, to somehow get material from the cosmos. So I asked Harrison Schmidt when the next manned spaceflight would start. Naturally they all laughed at me and he said, in ten years. But it's utopian of course. The next day we all went down to the famous Baringo Meteor Crater, a field trip for the scientists, and we climbed down to see the place where the astronauts had practiced back then. A cowboy walking by my side asked me what I was doing there and if I was participating in the Mars project. No, I'm not, but in fact I sort of smuggle myself into the conference. I'm an artist and I paint with Earth from all the continents. His name was Marvin Gilgore and he was thunderstruck and replied, I do the same as you, so to speak. I travel through the five continents searching for meteorites. I collect them and take them back to my laboratory. There I saw off slices and examine them. In the process, filings drop off and are left over with dust which I have kept for years. Meteorite research is about learning uh, how the Earth was formed, uh, learning about um, the formation of the solar system, and also learning about what resources uh, are in these meteorites. In other words, if we're ever going to uh, live in space, we have to have resources in space that we use. We can't take it with us. And I'm talking about mankind. Our, I believe mankind's destiny is to become an interplanetary species. Uh, if we are to become that interplanetary species, we need to know what's in this material. This is, this is what's out there. This is our resources. This is where we get our food, our fuels, our radiation shielding, everything we need to survive. So it's a, a very important thing to acquire as much of this material as we can and to preserve it for uh, future generations of scientists who will have um, resources in, in technology that we don't have today. So the excursion to the meteor crater turned out to become a most important moment for the development of Rika Arnold's paintings, thanks to Marvin Gilgore and his scientific work. So anyway. Sofort bot er mir an, dieses Material Straight away, Marvin Gilgore offered me this material to paint with. So all of a sudden, the wish I had expressed the day before had become reality. 
And since that time, I always get stardust from Marvin Gilgore. Marvin Gilgore, uh, stop. The particles of the meteorite paintings come from five meteorites from four continents. In contrast to the earth paintings, the meteorite paintings are created in her studio in Dusseldorf. For the composition of these paintings, it is not the source of the material which is significant, but rather the conception of the enormous forces at work in the universe. A meteor appears as a trail of light visible across the night sky. The meteorite is a meteor which survives the heat of the entry into the Earth's atmosphere and which falls to the ground. These stones and irons have come from across the universe from planets, asteroids and comets, having travelled millions of miles on a collision course with Earth. With the different key aspects of her activities, Earth paintings, meteorite paintings and her rock art, Ulrika Arnold offers an extensive oeuvre that can be presented in many variations. Whether it's the destination to rock paintings in remote places of the world, a classical exhibition in a museum, or a rather unusual presentation in a designer's office, whenever Ulrika Arnold is present, she always knows how to tell you about her journeys in detail in an entertaining and impressive way.